Hi everyone, Jonathan Roberts here. This is a quick overview and tutorial of the PDF Reader and Annotator 4 score. For online teaching, I think this app is really second to none. I have not found another piece of software like it that is easy to use, to scan music into, to annotate, and to send to students. It's uh, really easy to use once you figure it out, but it takes some experimenting, and I'm hoping this little tutorial will save you a few steps. So we'll go through how to bring music into Fourscore, either by scanning books that you have at home or retrieving them from your students, how to annotate them, and how to send them. So to start, we're going to go ahead and open up Fourscore. And I just have something opened up from a previous lesson here. And uh, when in doubt about anything, just tap the very top of the screen, and that brings up the sort of main toolbar. And in particular, you're going to use the top, uh, very top right and very top left icons quite a bit. The top left displays scores that you have stored already. So as you can see, I have quite a few. I've been using this for a little while. And then the option in the very top right gives you all of the actions that you're going to need for annotating and scanning and sharing and stuff like that. So uh, to start, let's go through how you bring in a piece of music if you have a book in front of you that you need to bring in for annotating for your student. So to get there, you're just going to tap the top of the screen to bring this menu up. And then from this right hand drop down menu, you'll tap scan. And you're going to tap this little plus symbol right here. And that brings up the camera that basically acts like a scanner. So say I want to bring in this page of a duet. You essentially take a picture and it's, it tries to help you out by taking its best guess at what you're trying to scan. And then you can move these corners around to sort of line everything up the way you want it. Yeah, that's good enough. And then when I, uh, then in the bottom right, I'll tap keep scan. That basically kind of flattens it out to make it look like a proper scan. And I'll go ahead and do a two pager just so you can see what that layout looks like. Here I'll do the second page. And here it totally, uh, oh no, it actually got it pretty close. Sometimes when there's little boxed text like that, it automatically reads that and thinks that's what you're trying to scan. So again, I'll do keep scan. It'll make something that's sort of scan-like. And then again, also on the bottom right, I'm going to tap save. When you're in doubt about saving or next steps, check the corners. It's usually a safe bet. And then on this page, I can reorder the scans that I've done for the final PDF. And when I'm finished with that, I'll go to the top right and tap save. It'll ask me to uh, pick a name for it. So I'll just call this Scherzo and Trio. And depending on your system, you may want to try different things. I usually put the name of the piece and my student's name just so I can find it, find it really quickly. And it automatically saves everything. You don't really have to tap a save button once you uh, hit the annotations. So as you can see, now it is successfully scanned into my Fourscore. And I can page it forwards and backwards. If you're trying to bring in a scan that you already have, um, PDFs will go to Fourscore quite easily. If you have a JPEG or an image file, it will not go quite so easily. We'll uh, talk a bit more about that in a moment. Um, let's talk about how to bring in, say, a student sends you something like this. If you don't have a copy of their music, just a picture. So I'll tap the top right, which you're probably familiar with is the item that uh, usually exports files to other places. And this is all the places I can send it. Notice that Fourscore does not appear here. That's because this is an image uh, file. It's not a PDF file. So what I have to do first is save this image. And then Fourscore has a module inside that'll allow you to bring in an image from that point. It's a little inconvenient. It's a bit of an extra step. If your student sends you a PDF from the outset, then Fourscore will appear among these icon items and you'll be able to send it straight over without a problem. So if I want to bring this in, I'm going to go down the menu and tap uh, Save Image. I'm not going to do Save Six Images just because this is a little tutorial, but if I wanted to save all of the page files that the student sent, you could do it quickly with Save Six Images. So I'm going to tap Save Image and that saves it to my iPad's photos. And then if I go back to Fourscore, I'll do the same exact thing, even though it's not really a scan scan. 
we're going to do the top right menu and tap scan. And we're, ba we're back to this page, but if you look at the top, there's a little icon with a picture on it. I'm going to tap that, and that brings up my photo roll. And I'm going to go to that last one that was saved. Now this is where it gets a little confusing because it said loading and then nothing happened. So every time you tap one of these pictures, it's going to say loading. And then it seems like nothing happens, but actually in the background, it's bringing these into Fourscore to be part of this PDF. So as you can see, it took all three of those, even though I didn't get a confirmation or celebratory message that what I did worked. So uh, I'm actually going to X these last two out because I don't really want them. Uh, I, again, if you do want them, you can reorder these however you want by just touching and dragging to create a multi-page PDF. But I'll stick with that one original one, and in the top right, I'll tap Save. And I'll just use the name of the tune to save as. And here we are. So this is the official file. I know it looks just like a picture, but we are indeed in Fourscore. If I tap the very, very top of the screen, I get that menu that is uh, starting to become a bit more familiar. So now let's talk about annotating. Uh, I think we've gone through the basics of how to bring music into Fourscore. And I'm actually going to go back to the original one that I scanned, just because I'd prefer to do that one. And for this, I'm using a Wacom Bamboo Stylus. A stylus pen is very highly recommended. It can give you some more accuracy as opposed to just using your finger. And when you're ready to annotate something, you're going to tap that top right corner. And that very first item, you're going to tap Annotate. And that brings up the annotation menu. There are a lot of items up here. I'll just sort of go through the essentials. In the very, very top left, you have the option to add accidentals. I don't really use this very much. You can add sharps in, flats, naturals, and essentially you can just um, you can just tap this item, and then when you want to add a flat next to something, you tap and hold, and you can position that flat where you want it to be. I don't use it very much just because when I'm marking that kind of thing in my students' music, I want them to know that I marked it, and it's not something that's in the print music. Uh, this sort of on onboard um, accidental module looks astonishingly like actual printed music, so I don't really use that too much. Now, one thing when you're in the navigation menu is moving around. This is where I think four scores kind of stands out, because <clears throat> usually when in a lot of other programs when you want to move around the screen you have to get out of annotation mode move where you need to go and then go back into annotation mode and it ends up being quite time consuming with this all you need to do is use two fingers for anything so if I want to zoom in I use two fingers if I want to move around I use two fingers so if I swipe with one finger it does whatever men whatever item I have uh, selected at the top which in this case it's still on the flat item let me get rid of that. But if I do two fingers, it actually moves the score around. Uh, most of what you're probably going to use are these colors along the top. This is basically your palette of colors and pens and stuff to use for annotating. And uh, now I'm going to use my stylus pen for a lot of this. And you can actually customize this. When you tap any of these colors one time, it selects that item for writing in your music. And in the top right, while I'm at it, we have a backwards arrow and a forwards arrow. That's basically an undo redo. So whatever your last marking was, that will undo that. So I just made three separate marks, undo once, undo twice, undo three times. And if I want to redo, I just press that forward button. I think most people are pretty familiar with the undo redo functionality of most things. And you can customize these colors. And the, all you have to do to do that is if you have a color selected, you just need to tap on it again, and then you receive this menu. And you can really customize it however you want. You can change the size, you can change the, um, you can change the color, you can change the saturation. There's all kinds of ways you can change this around. So I'll just, um, I don't even remember what I had this on, I'll just leave it on this sort of neon green. But you can, cut, you can do that for every single one of these. And when I do my non-online lessons, I'm a teacher that uses different colored pencils, so this works out perfectly for me. And as far as taking annotations, the way I like to do it is I like to zoom in very, very close. So let's say I'm using sort of a neon pink as my color for the day. You can zoom in quite 
microscopically to put various markings. Like let's say I want to circle these staccatos. This makes it really easy. I can use almost a wide stroke, if you will. And then when I zoom it back, it actually looks like a fairly polished annotation as opposed to not zooming it in. That's very hard to get accurate. And again, to do that, important thing to remember, two fingers. So two fingers widen to zoom in, two fingers in. As you can see, I accidentally struck, struck it with one finger, hence that stray mark, which brings me to another tool up here uh, in the top right-ish this little item, that's the eraser, and you can customize how wide or narrow that is if you need to erase something. Maybe it's too far in the past to use the undo item, and then I just sort of swipe over that and that erases the mark that I made. Whenever I need to use text, there are a couple of options. If I use this item here, this is a text tool. I don't use it very much. I, I try it in the beginning, but it ends up taking a fair bit of time. So the, the way that works is you, type, you tap where you want to use some actual print text and your keyboard comes up. I'm just gonna make up some words. And then this is where it can get a little tricky. When I'm done with my text, I have to tap this check mark in, on the right side of the keyboard, upper right side. And this little circle thing can get a little confusing. So the left circle allows you to drag this text to where you want it. And then the right circle allows you to make it narrower or wider. Um, now that being said, I don't really use this very much just because it takes kind of a while and it's really easy to add these extra little stray ones because you forget to change the item in the annotation toolbar. So I'm going to get rid of this one just by hitting the little trash can. Yes, I would like to delete. And the, the technique I like to use when I need to actually write words is again to zoom in really, really close. And then I can actually write my words kind of big and then it comes out normal when I pan back out. So let, let's say I want to write the word staccato. So right now it looks fairly big, but when I zoom back out, that actually looks like reasonable handwriting. And this saves your annotations. Uh, you don't have to actually click save. It just kind of stays there forever for when you need to bring it up. So for me, uh, it's great because one lesson I could use this color. Another lesson I could use purple, another lesson I could use this green color, which works with my teaching style uh, using you know, different, different colored pencils. One other note about when you're in annotation mode is paging forward and backwards. Uh, again, it's another feature that I really love about this because you don't have to actually exit annotation mode, but uh, you do just have to know where the buttons are. Uh, in, the, in the toolbar, there's a previous page and next page button that allows you to page through your PDF without having to actually exit the, the annotator or annotation mode. So now let's say you want to send this to somebody, you know, you've finished your lesson and you want to send it and it's really, really easy. You're just going to tap that top right corner. And this time we're going to go down to share, which you're probably familiar with from a lot of other programs. And it gives you some options here. We have PDF 4SC and annotated PDF. PDF will send the original PDF without any annotations. Annotated PDF will send it with annotations and 4SC is actually a specific file type for Fourscore users. So if you send this to somebody and they open it up in Fourscore, they can actually erase the, uh, the annotations that you made or make edits to the annotations that you made. So that's what those four file types are all about. But usually you're probably just going to go with annotated PDF and it gives you all of the different options that you may want to use to send it places. My students use Evernote, so that's usually my go-to, but say I want to send it to somebody in an email, it automatically attaches it to an email, and I just put my email address that I want to send it to, and, they, and then they have it. I'm just gonna delete that for now. And any, pretty much anything you can share a PDF with, you can just use that share button to send your annotated PDF wherever you need to go. And those are the basics of how to use Fourscore. If you have any questions, please do drop them in the comments below. And if you found this helpful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the icon. We're planning on releasing a whole lot of new videos in the coming days for teachers, parents, and students as we weather this virtual universe together. Thank you so much and see you soon.